Neanderthals, our closest relatives, lived alongside early humans for millennia. However, as we progressed into the Homo sapiens species we know today, these ancient beings vanished into the mists of time. What led to their disappearance? Was it a slow fade or a cataclysmic event? Scientists have long puzzled over this question, with each discovery adding pieces to a puzzle that seemed unsolvable. Now, in a groundbreaking twist, the discovery and analysis of the remains of what is considered to be the last Neanderthal has provided new information about this extinction. This finding is rooted in the Rhone Valley of France and has the potential to alter the story of human evolution as we know it. The Neanderthals have always been a source of fascination and mystery. First discovered in the Neander Valley of Germany in 1856, they were initially misunderstood as brutish and primitive. Over time, however, we have come to see a more nuanced picture, that they were skilled hunters, made complex tools, and even demonstrated symbolic thought through art and burial practices. Neanderthals first appeared in Eurasia around 400,000 years ago, spreading from Western Europe to as far east as Siberia. They thrived in a variety of environments, adapting to both glacial and interglacial periods. Despite their apparent prowess, the Neanderthal population began to wane around 40,000 years ago, roughly coinciding with the arrival of modern humans in Europe. Various theories have been proposed to explain their decline, climate change, competition with Homo sapiens, and even disease. For a long time, the narrative was that the Neanderthals were an evolutionary dead end, outcompeted by the more adaptable and innovative Homo sapiens. However, discoveries over the past few decades have complicated this story. In 2015, the serene landscape of the Rhone Valley in France became the stage for a new discovery. Ludovic Slimak, a paleoanthropologist who had been exploring the Grotta Mandarin Cave since 1998, unearthed the jaw fragment of a Neanderthal. This initial finding was just the beginning of a journey that would span nearly a decade. Piece by piece, Slimak and his team uncovered more of this ancient being, the Neanderthal, later named Thorin, after J.R.R. Tolkien's character Thorin Oakenshield, was determined to have lived approximately 42,000 years ago, during the twilight of the Neanderthal era. With the discovery of Thorin's remains, Slimak embarked on a quest to uncover the deeper truths of this ancient being. The journey led to the extraction and analysis of Thorin's genome, a process that required cutting-edge techniques in paleogenomics. Ancient DNA is notoriously difficult to work with as it degrades over time and is often contaminated by modern DNA or environmental factors. The genome revealed high genetic homozygosity, indicating that Thorin's group had experienced a significant degree of inbreeding in their recent past. In genetic terms, homozygosity refers to the presence of identical alleles at a particular gene locus, which can result from mating within a limited population pool. This high degree of inbreeding points to a population that had been shrinking for some time, likely leading to a reduced gene pool and increased vulnerability to environmental pressures. Equally intriguing was the absence of any evidence of interbreeding with modern humans in Thorin's genetic makeup. While previous studies have shown that some Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens interbred, contributing to the genetic diversity of modern non-African populations, Thorin's lineage appeared to have remained isolated until its end. This finding raises compelling questions about the nature of interactions between these ancient populations. Why did Thorin's group remain isolated while others intermingled? Did cultural, ecological, or behavioral factors play a role in maintaining this separation? The discovery of Thorin has profound implications for our understanding of Neanderthal extinction and human evolution. Traditionally, the disappearance of Neanderthals has been viewed as a linear narrative, a gradual decline due to competition with Homo sapiens or a failure to adapt to changing environments. However, Thorin's story suggests a more complex scenario. The idea that a group of Neanderthals could remain genetically isolated for tens of thousands of years, despite the presence of other hominid populations nearby, challenges the conventional wisdom about how ancient human species interacted. This finding implies that the end of the Neanderthals was not a single, homogenous event, but rather a mosaic of different experiences across regions and populations. 
Some groups, like Thorans, may have lived in relative isolation, while others interbred with Homo sapiens and left a genetic legacy in modern humans. The presence of unique stone tools in the Rhone Valley, which differed from those in neighboring areas, further supports the idea of a distinct Neanderthal culture that persisted independently of other populations. Slimax's work suggests that the extinction of Neanderthals was not merely a matter of being outcompeted by Homo sapiens. Instead, it may have involved a complex interplay of factors, including social structures, ecological adaptations, and perhaps even cultural preferences that shaped the interactions between these ancient groups. As Slimak himself put it, everything must be rewritten about the greatest extinction in humanity and our understanding of this incredible process that will lead Homo sapiens to remain the only survival of humanity. The discovery of Thorin also invites us to reconsider the social and cultural life of the Neanderthals. For a long time, Neanderthals were depicted as simplistic and uncultured compared to early modern humans. However, this view has been increasingly challenged by evidence of their cognitive abilities. Neanderthals made sophisticated tools, used fire, and may have practiced some form of ritual behavior, as indicated by burial sites containing grave goods. Recent findings even suggest that they created symbolic art, as seen in the painted cave walls of Spain, which date back over 60,000 years. Thorin's isolated lineage raises intriguing questions about Neanderthal society. How did they organize themselves in small, isolated groups? What kind of social structures did they have? The inbreeding observed in Thorin's lineage could imply a tightly knit community with limited interaction with outsiders. This insularity might have been a survival strategy, a way to maintain cohesion and identity in the face of changing environments and the encroachment of other hominid species. The sequencing of Thorin's DNA has opened a new chapter in our understanding of the Neanderthals and their eventual disappearance. It has revealed a story not of a single extinction event, but of a complex and varied existence, one that involved periods of isolation, adaptation, and perhaps even resilience in the face of a changing world. Thorin stands as evidence of a forgotten chapter of human history, a lone figure representing a lineage that walked its own path, separate from both its Neanderthal kin and the emerging Homo sapiens. Thanks for watching this journey into the story of Thorin and the last Neanderthals and how their DNA is rewriting our understanding of human history. If you enjoyed this documentary, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth explorations of the latest scientific discoveries. Stay tuned as we dive deeper into the mysteries of our ancient past and uncover more about the incredible journey of humanity. Until next time.